The year was 1995 and Lee Jansen was your players champion and we're going to take a little walk down memory lane here Lee if you don't mind. So uh, that particular year your winning score was 5 under 283. It comes the year after Greg Norman had set a record there 24 under in his total 264. That's that's kind of a big difference. What, what were the conditions like for for Greg as opposed to to you winning? Well, um, a lot of overseed, so yeah. the course had been watered a lot. P die course is meant to be played fast because the trouble is on the perimeter or right around the fairways and around the greens, and he wants you to be very exact. When it's wet, you can pretty much hit it anywhere, and the ball is going to stop in the fairway, and then also your shot into the green, the ball is going to stop. So you can be a lot more aggressive when it's fast and hard, which the following year, 1995, the course, um, very little rough, very little overseed, fast, and we had some wind, so the course played very tough. So it was completely different conditions where uh, you had an aggressive setup where you could go at the pin, and if you missed it left or right five yards, you still hit the green and you had a 15-footer. Um, when it's really fast, you had to be very exact on where you landed it because the ball was going to hit and bounce and roll a lot, and the greens are small with a little undulation here and there, so you a much smaller target to hit it in. Yeah, so I would think uh, for you, for one year to the next, Tell me about the mental grind uh, of that particular week for you. Right. Uh, well, the first two days, the wind was up more than the weekend, um, and it was very tough. I remember the first day that, and I think the first two days were a similar wind, but it was very 15, 20 maybe. So it mm -hmm. was, you know, two to three club wind here and there. Um, the holes don't go straight back and forth, so it's not like you're always playing straight down wind or straight into the wind. Um, a lot of holes cross wind. Some holes are in, so you have a lot of different winds to deal with all day long, so you're having to shape different shots all day long trying to figure out how to get the ball to stop where you want it. So it's not like you can just go out and play one type of shot in the wind. Sure. Um, and your short game needs to be there because you're just not going to hit all the greens when the conditions are like that, so you need to miss it in the right spot, give yourself a chance to get up and down, and putt well, make a lot of 6-8 footers. Yeah, and I can imagine on Sunday coming down the stretch on you know, 16, 17, 18, 17 gets a lot of attention obviously because uh, of well it's a famous hole one of the most famous when holes I'm on the range before my round I look at the wind and then I say what's the wind gonna be on 17 when I get there and I hit a handful of balls as though I'm playing the 17th hole with that in mind um, it's rarely that I'd play a hole like that on the range ahead of time maybe 12 at Augusta is another hole I might do that where I mm -hmm. actually am worried about what the winds gonna be on that hole even though it's 17 holes away I, I want to be already have it in my mind what I want to do before I ever get there. And wow. then, of course, it's a long walk from 16 all the way around, and you can't help but stare at the green. So uh, there's a lot going on there. It's not you'd think, okay, it's just a wedge or a nine iron. Um, these pros can hit it, you know, they hit it in the middle of the green, right? Well, it's it's a lot different when missing the green means you're hitting it again from where you are, or well, you go up to the ball drop, which is no bargain. Sure, I wondered if it was as much strategy as it was mystique but it, apparently it is if you're thinking about it even before you're around. oh yeah all right so let's get to 18 and you get through 17 and then your particular Sunday in 95 uh, it's important because there's water left and you you pull three wood right off yes, the tee and it's important wood. not to go left so tell me about your strategy on that final hole and trying to take it home right so the hole bends around the lake for us in 1995, the way the hole was, we nobody could hit it far enough that you could carry the lake. They they now do that. Um, I watch them play the Players Championship now on TV, and um, the stretch Ricky Fowler had the year he won, and they're just driving it over the corner of the lake and having wedge in. That's crazy. Um, the reason why I hit three wood in '95, we had a uh, southeast wind, so it was right to left and behind us. Um, a driver would have had a chance of going through the fairway unless I wanted to challenge the lake more, which really I didn't, don't need to do if I have a one-shot lead or a two-shot lead. So three would gave me the widest target to hit. That's why I picked it. Um, also, I knew that I could control my three wood, the shape of it. With the downwind right to left, I draw the ball, so the ball was going to ride the wind, so I was going to get plenty of distance out of it using the three wood. Um, so the important thing is now don't overdraw it. Don't hook it. Um, the hole's very demanding, so you just can't hit it out to the right and expect to be able to have a chance to knock it on the green and make an easy par. So uh, it's a very important to hit a good tee shot. All right, so take us through and uh, let's recreate that particular shot, so that particular day. I, I know pretty much what my swing thought was back then because I, I would, if I missed it, I might hook it or block it. So uh, my path was in to out. 
So my concern would be, okay, what do I need to do to make sure I don't overhook it? And that's, I got to rotate. So tempo and rotate. So I'm, I'm sure my thoughts were keep my head still, make a good turn, and then, you know, I'm not, don't be in a rush. So my tempo was important, but I was also making sure my left hip, hip cleared and my hands were in front of the ball. So that to me, that's going to keep the face from over rotating. Um, but my natural tendency was to be a little in and out, so it was going to draw. So I got on the left side of the tee box and aimed it down the right and trusted that if I did that, the ball would start down the right side and draw with the wind. All right, let's, let's give it a shot here. We have a similar win. Do yeah, right, right now, now on the range, this is perfect. Good. Of course, this is, this is a whole, what, 25 years later. <laughs> Equipment's changed, I've changed. Oh, you're good to go. Yeah, that would actually, I need to do that some more. You're good to go right there. All right, Lee. All right. Never goes away. It's like riding Thanks. a bike. Thanks Thank for you. the info. Yeah, I think I'm going to use that now. Well, good. Glad we could help you here on Learning Center. All right. <laughs> Somebody had to learn. <laughs>